In this lesson, we will review the boundaries and the structures that participate in the formation of the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is a triangular area on the front or the anterior side of the elbow joint. And we can start by looking at an anterior vantage point of the right elbow joint. The humerus, the ulna, and the radius participate in the formation of the elbow joint. And the first key structure of the cubital fossa is a muscle known as the pronator teres muscle. This muscle has its attachment onto the medial epicondyle of the humerus more proximally, and then the fibers of this muscle extend laterally and inferiorly to reach the mid-shaft of the radius and they attach onto the middle third of the radius. There's a second muscle known as the brachioradialis muscle, and this muscle extends from the lateral epicondyle and the region above it, known as the supracondylar ridge of the humerus. And then the fibers extend distally and attach onto the distal radius. The area of attachment is beyond what the diagram depicts. This muscle is known as the brachioradialis, as the name suggests. Brachium is the arm, and radialis refers to the radius. So this muscle extends from the humerus, the distal humerus in this case, to the distal radius. Pronator teres, just to uh, give you the description of the pronator teres, is a muscle that pronates the forearm. And teres refers to the shape of this muscle. Specifically, in a transverse section, it has a round shape. These two muscles form the boundaries of this triangular space that we call the cubital fossa as shown here. One boundary, the lateral boundary of this cubital fossa, is formed by the medial border of the brachioradialis muscle. The other boundary, which is the medial boundary of the cubital fossa, is formed by the lateral border of the pronotaris muscle. And then the third border, or the third edge of this cubital fossa, being a triangular space, is formed by an imaginary line that runs across the epicondylar, the epicondylar area of the humerus. Now this triangular area has certain key structures, and we can look at those structures now. The first one of these is a tendon. It's the tendon of the biceps muscle, which is the main muscle of the arm. This tendon here runs across the cubital fossa and goes on to its point of attachment onto the proximal radius. It's a strong tendon and can be easily palpable in the cubital fossa area. If one continues to palpate more proximally, one can feel the pulsations of the brachial artery, which is seen here. This is another key structure that enters the cubital fossa and then exits from its inferior edge. More medial to the brachial artery is another key structure, in this time a nerve. This is the median nerve, which is one of the key branches from the brachial plexus, and is seen here. The median nerve also enters the cubital fossa and exits out from its inferior or medial edge. The medial nerve goes on to supply many of the key structures, muscles, uh, in the forearm and the hand. Thus, we have reviewed the cubital fossa, its formation and boundaries, and some of the key structures that traverse this region. Let's now look at a photograph of a dissection of this region. Again, to orient ourselves, we see the biceps muscle in the more proximal part of the photograph here. And the tendon of this biceps muscle has been cut, uh, partly at least, and so we see this part of the tendon going on its way to its point of attachment onto the proximal radius. The other part of the biceps tendon, which extends more medially, is shown here, and that has been cut away. This is the uh, bicipital eponeurosis, which goes on to attach onto the medial side of the forearm, specifically to some of the fascia and the ulna. This has been cut away and removed in order to see some of the structures in the cubital fossa. One of the key structures in the cubital fossa is the brachial artery, and we see this key structure 
running down into the cubital fossa over here. So this is the brachial artery, and note that it is on the medial side of the biceps tendon. In exactly the same relationship, if one were to palpate the cubital fossa in a patient. On the medial side of the brachial artery is this important nerve known as the median nerve, and it is seen here. And to complete the picture of the cubital fossa, we will put the two muscles that form the boundaries, the pronototeres, which is seen here, uh, shaded in red. This is all the pronototeres muscle. And this forms the medial boundary of the cubital fossa. The other muscle, which is on the lateral side, is seen here, and this is the brachioradialis muscle. The two muscles overlap and come close to each other in the inferior um, angle or inferior point of the cubital fossa.